Hello you guys and welcome back to my channel. So in continuation with the kind of character profile or character development videos, I've decided to do Glenn Ree. Now I'm going to be talking about the TV show Glenn and not the comic book Glenn. So in season one we first encounter Glenn in the pilot episode Days Gone By. Although we don't see Glenn in this episode, we hear his voice at the end of the episode talking to Rick through a walkie talkie. And then in the second episode, Glenn proceeds to save Rick's ass. If it wasn't for Glenn, Rick would have died in that little tank. He brings Rick back to like a building where the rest of the group are hanging out. They end up getting trapped. Now it's while they're trapped that Glenn tries to find a way out. He goes down to the sewers and he discovers you can't get out that way. When he's talking about going into the sewers, somebody suggests going with him or whatever. And Glenn then says, well this is my first time bringing a group into the city, into Atlanta. And it's kind of pretty much gone to shit. So we learn that Glenn is fast, he's agile, he's smart, and he kind of works best alone. So then he works with Rick, they cover themselves in walker guts, they get through the herd, and then Rick gets a van, Glenn drives this really cool sports car that's letting off a really annoying fucking alarm. Glenn distracts the walkers while Rick brings the van back to the building and saves the group. But of course then they gotta go look for Merle because the crater was abandoned on top of the roof. Glenn leads the group back into Atlanta because Glenn knows the area best. Merle had enough of it, he skipped fucking town and left his hand behind him. So then in season 2, Glenn meets Maggie. They go to Herschel's barn and it's clear that Glenn is a thing from her from pretty much the moment he sees her. Then we have the well walker scene which was a key scene for Glenn. He goes down the well to try and get a walker out of the well and clog it so they can use the water. While he's down in the well, something happens and he starts freaking out and he's like screaming, pull me up, pull me up. They pull him up and everyone's like, well the plan has gone to shit, we have to find a plan B. Then it's revealed that Glenn, while he was freaking out and spazzing out, managed to get a rope around the walker so they could drag him out of the well. That shows that Glenn is focused even when he's absolutely terrified. He can still get shit done. If somebody had suggested putting me down a well, I'd have been like, I don't give a fuck how smart you think I am. I'm not doing it. You get down the well. Don't even fucking look at me as a suggestion. Then he goes out on a run to the pharmacy with Maggie. This is where he gets Laurie's pregnancy test. While they're there, Maggie gets all flirty and initiates sex. I liked that scene a lot because it was kind of clumsily done. It, was, it wasn't it was awkward, but like it wasn't smooth or anything like that. And it was Maggie that initiated it. That kind of set the scene for Glenn's character, how he is with women. Then they get back and Maggie's kind of acting weird with him and she says, you know, it was a one-time thing. Don't get too attached. But they end up passing notes at the dinner table and Glenn suggests meeting up later on at the barn. Maggie doesn't read the note until it's too late. Glenn has gone into the barn all dead happy with himself, thinking that he's going to get some action. Instead, all he gets is walker action. There's walkers all over the barn. He then tells Dale and Maggie's kind of pissed at him that he couldn't keep it a secret. And then when Beth gets sick, Glenn goes out with Rick to get Herschel because Herschel left and was inside a pub. So they go to get him and bring him back. Not only is he Beth's father, but he's also a doctor. While they're there, they get ambushed, they end up killing a few fellas, and then the rest of the fucking crew roll up, so they have to get out a back way. Rick suggests that Herschel lays some fire while Glenn like, tries to get out and do his thing. Glenn kind of gets shot at and he panics, and he hides down behind a dumpster. What the fuck is it with that man and dumpsters? It's later revealed when they get back that Glenn was so afraid of dying because he was afraid of how Maggie would take it. Before he'd left to go out with Rick to find Herschel, Maggie had told him that she loved him and he hadn't said it back. And I think while he was sitting by the dumpster, he was just processing everything that had happened so far. He hadn't said it back. I think in his head as well, he was thinking, if I die here, I would have never told her that I loved her. And he was worried about how she would take his death, how it would affect her, because becoming involved with people in the apocalypse, not a good idea. Then he has the talk with Herschel and Herschel tells him, uh, no man is good enough for your little girl until one is. And then he gives him his pocket watch. Herschel had explained his heritage, where the watch had come from, and he gave it to Glenn. This was another massive moment for Glenn, because he had talked a little bit about his family before the apocalypse, that he had a few sisters and his mother. He kind of found a new family with the group, and then with Herschel almost giving him his blessing to date Maggie, and with Maggie being crazy about him, it was just a really lovely moment. Then the walkers invade the farm, and Glenn gets out with Maggie, and this is where he tells her, finally, that he loves her. Season 3 we see that things have progressed, they move into the prison and Glenn and Maggie share a cell together. How romantic. After Herschel gets his leg amputated, Glenn stays by his side to kind of look over him, to mind him and because Rick had told him if he turns you're going to have to kill him. He leaves his post because Carol asks him to help her pick out a walker to perform a c-section on. Then a little bit later on we see him digging graves because Laurie had died and T-Dog had died protecting Carol. So we see him digging graves and he tells Herschel we should have killed the prisoners like when we got here. 
When they arrived at the prison, there was a few prisoners still in the prison, but they didn't know about the apocalypse. They were like locked up in a room, away from the world. They should have just fucking stayed there. It seemed to be working out fine for them. This is showing that Glenn is slowly adapting to this world. He's starting to lose parts of his humanity. The fact that he had that thought where we should have just killed them. Then Glenn goes with Maggie on another run, and this is where they're picked up by Merle. Merle, who everyone had assumed was dead, or had enough of everyone's shit and had left, he was still there and he was now working with the governor. He brings Glenn and Maggie back to Woodbury and they are interrogated. Glenn is beaten to within a fucking inch of his life. There's that really horrible scene with Maggie and the governor. When Glenn isn't giving anything up, then Merle decides it's a great idea to fucking throw a walker inside the room with him. Glenn goes on MacGyver and smashes his chair off of a wall and kills the walker. Then he sees Maggie is topless with the governor and he loses his shit. He presumes that the governor has raped her. So Merle throws Glenn and Maggie back into a cell where Glenn rips out a walker's bone and starts sharpening it as a weapon. That man is so resourceful. But everything goes well and everything is fine because Rick and Cole turn up and they save them. On the way back to the prison, we see Glenn like repeatedly stomping on a walker's head and losing his shit. I think this was him getting out his frustration. Herschel had told him that he trusted him with Maggie. Maggie obviously loved him and trusted him very much, so I think... Glenn had a moment of shame, of a moment of doubt of like, is this gonna work? Can I actually protect her? Like, what the fuck could this world throw at us? Daryl then tries to get Merle to tell Glenn that he's sorry for what he did. And Glenn kind of tells him, well, if it had been just me, I'd be able to forgive whatever, but I can't forgive over what happened Maggie. Over the embarrassment she went through, over everything that happened to her, no. So he's putting Maggie's well-being before his own. He cares about Maggie more than he does himself, which is very dangerous in this world because if you love someone, you'll do anything to protect them. And it'll be easier to hurt a person who loves someone than to actually hurt them. Then in season four, there's a bit of a pregnancy scare. Maggie thinks she might be pregnant. We see Glenn walking through his shop, looking at nappies, all like, oh fuck no. But it turns out she isn't pregnant. I think Glenn is relieved by that because at this point in the show, he doesn't think it's possible to raise a family in this world. He has just seen what happened to Laurie. Laurie died in childbirth. And I think he's frightened that could happen Maggie. Then we have the scene where they're up in the tower and he takes a Polaroid picture of Maggie. That picture's gonna come in handy in the future. Then the outbreak happens and everyone in the prison starts getting sick. They start getting violently ill. Herschel, because he's a doctor, starts helping people and Glenn tries to help him. But then Glenn gets really sick and nearly dies. Herschel then has to wrestle a walker on top of like a net. Because the walker has like a tube in his mouth that Glenn needs to breathe. I think it's called like an intubator or something. But Herschel's wrestling this walker trying to get it out of his mouth. And Maggie comes in with a gun and Herschel kind of says don't shoot, you know, you could shoot the thing that we need for Glenn. Maggie's standing there with a gun in her hand knowing that she could shoot one of three things. The walker, the tube or her father. And she handled it so fucking well, she shot the walker and then Herschel went and tended to Glenn and Maggie helped and Glenn was alright, he didn't die. Then when the governor comes along to the prison, Maggie gets a very sick, very kind of weak Glenn and puts him on a bus to get out of there. She then leaves to find someone else. I think she was leaving to find, like, Beth or something. Glenn gets off the bus to look for her. And when Maggie comes back and the bus is gone, she thinks Glenn is gone. They don't know that they're both at the prison. So Glenn passes out. When he wakes up, he's on, like, a, a bridge thing. He's high up so the walkers can't get to him. He's one of the luckiest motherfuckers. So many times has he escaped death at this point? You know if that was yourself or myself. We would have passed out on the ground and we would have been eaten before the bus had even fucking left the prison. He puts on the riot gear and as he's leaving the prison he meets Tara. Tara had been on the governor's side and she feels a lot of guilt about it. She had just blindly followed the governor into war without really knowing why. So Glenn then tells her that she is going to help him in the search for Maggie. Because Tara feels guilty and whatever she decides that she does owe him a good deed so she goes with him. So they're on the road and then Glenn passes out and Abraham comes along in his fucking big van thing and they pick Tara and Glenn up. When Glenn wakes up he freaks the fuck out he's like I need to find Maggie. And Abraham then says to him, if she's out there, like, she's probably dead. So Glenn loses his shit, they get into a fight. Glenn never loses hope that Maggie's still alive. They come across a tunnel, and Glenn wants to go through because it's faster, but Abraham is clever and just says, like, no, we can't go through a dark fucking tunnel, we're gonna go around. So Tara goes into the tunnel with Glenn. She ends up getting her legs stuck in a rock, and Glenn tries to distract them, and there's walkers, like, everywhere, and they're, like, inches from death. And Glenn won't leave Tara. And it's at that point that Abraham comes in from the other side of the tunnel, shoots all the walkers, and we find out that Maggie is with him. Maggie had obviously met up with Abraham outside the tunnel. 
So there's a lovely moment where they reconnect, they're together again. The entire world is a collective moment of thank fuck. And then it's that night then and she burns the Polaroid picture that he had taken of her. And she's like, you're never going to need us again because I'm never going to leave you. So in season five, when they get to Terminus, Glenn is actually next in line to be like, killed. When somebody comes in and says something about a thing, real descriptive, I know. So Glenn is kind of sitting there like, oh God. And then your man then turns to go to kill Glenn, but Carol blows up the place and they all manage to get out of there safe. Again, how many times has Glenn escaped death at this point? As they're leaving like the building, <clears throat> but they're still on the grounds of Terminus. There's like giant like cargo boxes and Glenn says to Rick we have to let the people in there out because there was a lot of like people who were being held in the boxes. Glenn kind of says to Rick that's not who we are, we have to help these people. This shows that Glenn still has humanity in him, he still has empathy in him. He's still a good guy, saving these people for no reason. Then fast forward a small little bit and they meet Gabriel, they go to Gabriel's church. While they're there, poor Bob gets his leg eaten, but he's already been bitten so he's fucked. But we know that Gareth, who was the fella who ran Terminus, is going to be back. But Abraham at this point had enough, he's like, I have a mission, I have to get Eugene to Washington. We have to get out of here, I have to leave. So Glenn then makes a deal with Abraham, smart thinking, and he tells Abraham, if you stay tonight and help us deal with Gareth, then me and Maggie will go with you tomorrow. So Abraham does, and they kill Gareth very bloodily and in a very almost animalistic way. But true to his words, the next morning, Glenn and Maggie take off with Abraham, and it's on this trip that we find out that Eugene has been full of shite. He's been lying to everyone. He's not actually a scientist. Now the reason Eugene came clean was because they, they came to a road and in front was just a fucking sea of walkers. Abraham wanted to plough through but Glenn was like we cannot do that, that is mad. But because this is the world now and the madness of life has just gotten to Abraham, Abraham's like we're going this way so Abraham and Glenn then get into a fight. That's when Eugene interrupts and he's all, <laughs> not a scientist, lol. So they make their peace anyway and they end up going back to the church where they end up saving Michonne, Carl and Judith. They arrive just in time to fucking kill the walkers and save them. This is where Michonne tells Maggie that Beth is still alive. Beth had gone missing a few episodes ago. This is Glenn's video though so we stay focused. Ben then is delighted for Maggie and he's so relieved that Beth is alive but then they get to the hospital and they arrive just in time to see Daryl carrying out Beth's body. Although Glenn didn't have a particularly close relationship with Beth, she was Maggie's sister. So you could kind of see Glenn crumble a little bit for Maggie and he was trying to comfort her. I guess this is just another sign that no matter how much you love someone or how much they matter to you, you can't keep them safe in this world. Then when they're out, they have no water, they have no food, they're in that little shelter place before they get to Alexandria. Aaron turns up and he tries to tell them about Alexandria. So Glenn goes out with Aaron and a few others to try and find Aaron's car to prove that he is who he says he is. Now, when they go out, they get cornered by walkers. So they all get out of the car, they're like running through a herd and Glenn saves Aaron. He comes up kind of behind him and saves him from a walker. And it's a good thing he did because if he hadn't saved Aaron, they, they mightn't have found Alexandria. I think it's somewhere along the way to Alexandria or, before they, or just before they leave that we see Glenn fixing the RV. This is something that Dale had taught him and we saw a lot of that back in season one and two. Dale had been a really important figure to him, as had Herschel. Herschel was like a father figure to him. I love that they put little things like that into the show later on to kind of bring up the memory of a past character. So when they arrived at Alexandria and they're all interviewed by Deanna, Glenn admits that he thought that they were almost out there too long. So Glenn is relieved to have found Alexandria. He's relieved to be there. And then he gets talking with Aidan and Nicholas and they tell him that they're going to be trained for runners. They're going to go out and runs and stuff. So this is where we see that Aidan and Aaron have tied up a walker and it was like a game to them because they're that stupid and immature and sheltered because of Alexandria. But the walker that they tied up got free, so they're looking for it. When it finally turns up, Aiden and Nicholas kind of like have fun with it or whatever. Glenn loses his shit and kills the walker. Then they go out on another run again. Aiden just makes a wrong decision and he tries to like kill a walker. Glenn spots a grenade on the walker and Glenn's like, fucking don't do it. But Aiden does it and he gets blown up against the wall. And then he gets stuck to the wall, he's like impaled on something. Nicholas comes up to Glenn and tells him, oh, he's dead, like I checked him, he's not breathing. Turns out Aiden is still alive and Glenn goes over to try to save him, but there's walkers in the area and he can't. Now they're on the way out and we have Noah's death scene. This was a, such an impactful scene for Glenn. They're in like revolving doors, which are frightening as it is, like without the walkers. And they're all trapped in the revolving doors because there's walkers like 
behind them. Eugene is waiting out front with the van so they can get out, but if, if one of them pushes the door, then somebody else is going to be exposed to the walker. Glenn comes up with an idea. He's like, if everyone holds the thing steady, I can break the glass. But Nicholas freaks out and saves himself. Just before Nicholas dies, he has a moment where he says to Glenn, don't let go. I thought this was a very clever line because it could have meant anything. I think Noah was saying don't let go as in don't lose your humanity, don't let go of who you are. Noah's relationship with Glenn, I think, had an impact on him and was important in shaping his character. Because before Noah's death scene, Glenn had a talk with Noah where he told him you know your family. You're like you're one of us now. And Glenn had brought Noah out on the run. But like it has become so clear in this world, he couldn't protect him. Then they get back to Alexandria. Nicholas is blaming Glenn for what happened. And then one day, Glenn sees Nicholas climbing a wall and Glenn follows him to get into a fight in the forest. Nicholas beats the shit out of him and leaves him for dead. But Glenn comes back, beats the shit out of him, but he doesn't kill him. Glenn lets Nicholas live and they both walk back to Alexandria together. This is another striking humanity scene. After everything that they'd been through, Nicholas had proven that he was pretty much useless. He was... He was frightened of this world. He wasn't made for this world. He had gotten people killed because of it, but Glenn wouldn't kill him. We later see the relationship between Glenn and Nicholas develop a little bit when they go out on a run with Heath. They come across a shop and they want to kill the walkers inside the shop, and Glenn says, we'll open one door and we'll let them come out. And he says to Nicholas, you go stand over there. Stay over there unless we need you. But the walkers come out a bit too fast for Heath and Glenn, and Nicholas steps in and helps kill them. This shows development on Nicholas's part because Glenn, Glenn had kind of seen something in him and he let him live and he was trying to teach him how to deal with this world. So because he didn't kill him that night in the forest, Nicholas kind of helped save their lives that day. But then it all comes full circle again. They end up getting trapped in that fucking alleyway and they get up on the bin. At this stage I was like, Glenn, just climb the fucking wall. Jump over the fence. I don't give a fuck. Just get out of that situation. Use fucking Nicholas as a surfboard. Surfboard over all them walkers. But Nicholas decided that his time was up. He was not going to be eaten by walkers. So he pulled up a gun and he shot himself. When he shot himself, he fell on Glenn. And I think because the gunshot was at such a close range that Glenn's kind of eardrums had just blown. So his balance was all off. Glenn fell to the floor with Nicholas. And at the end of that episode, we see someone being torn apart and Glenn screaming. So we see that it was Nicholas that was eaten, and Glenn has shimmied his way in under a bin. Now, I still don't get how that scene worked. Because even if you're underneath the body, surely, like, if someone's eaten a body that's on top of you, they would have been able to, like, eat Glenn's head, or, like, his hand, or his leg. I still don't see how that played out, but it did. Enid then comes along, throws Glenn some water, and he follows her and convinces her to go back to Alexandria with him. And he has a very deep conversation with her where he says, where Enid kind of talks about missing her family, that everyone she loves is dead. But then Glenn says to Enid, they're still here because you are. Personally, the way I took it was the memory of them lives on because you're still alive. Much like his relationship with Dale or Herschel or Noah or anyone that he'd known, they kind of live on through his memories. Because like with Dale, you had fixing the RV, which came in handy later on because Glenn had to fix another RV. With Herschel, you had the moment with the pocket watch, you had him giving his blessing to marry Maggie, which I forgot to talk about. Fuck! Earlier on, anyway, Glenn goes up to Herschel and he asked him for his blessing to marry Maggie. Herschel said yes, and Glenn went out to cut off the finger of a walker to get a ring and ask Maggie to marry him. She said yes. I can't believe I left that bit out. Anyway, back to present day, or where we are now. So by him saying that to Enid, I think that's him showing how he thinks, what his thought process is. That even when you lose somebody, they're still with you, like they don't leave you. So when they get to Alexandria, they see that Maggie is stranded up on top of like a post, and there's walkers everywhere. So Glenn and Enid devise a plan to get her down. And it's while the plan is in action that walkers swarm around Glenn, but Abraham and Sasha turn up just in time to kill the walkers. Again, Glenn has avoided death. That fella is like a cat. He has nine lives. They're on the way to Hilltop to talk away to Gregory. We know at this point that Maggie is pregnant and Abraham asks him, do you think this could work? Glenn then says to Abraham, well, we're trying to build something. This is such a different Glenn that we had seen two seasons ago. Back when he thought that Maggie was pregnant, he was so relieved when he found out that she wasn't. Because neither of them were ready at that point. But I think they've seen such misery and heartbreak and horror that they've decided we deserve something good. And 
kind of echoing back what Ian had said to him. I think that whole they're still alive because we are thing would apply to their kid. The Glenn's thinking if we have babies or one, even one kid, that that's what we're leaving behind. If we can, you know, keep this kid alive and raise it, someday when we die, they'll have the memory of us that we'll live on through them. We'll have left something good in the world. Then when they get to the Saviour's compound, Maggie stays on the outskirts of the compound with Carol because Maggie felt like she had to be there because she made the deal with Gregory, which I guess makes sense. So Glenn and Heath are just going around, cutting the heads off of walkers that look like Gregory. Heath admits to Glenn that he's kind of scared, he's nervous about the whole thing. Then they get into the Saviour's compound and Heath freezes. He can't kill the man that's in front of him, so Glenn steps in and kills the man for him. This shows that Glenn even though he hasn't lost his humanity, he has become ruthless. Glenn just sees what needs to be done. I mean, he's been through so much, he's lost so many people, he has seen the rise and fall of their group. And I think at this stage he's like, I'm just gonna do whatever I fucking need to keep my family safe. Then when they come out of the Saviour's compound and they think that they've done well and they've killed everyone, turns out Maggie and Carol have been taken captive. Glenn freaks out at this, obviously, because Maggie's pregnant with his baby and he loves her. But they soon reunite and Maggie says to Glenn, I just can't anymore. I think this was in reference to everything that they've been doing all along. Maggie had been this strong, independent woman since she came into the show. She'd never lost hope on the road to Terminus. They finally reunited. Then they stayed together in Alexandria. And then the Walker invasion happened. And then the Wolves happened. And then the Saviors happened. I think Maggie is just sick of bad things happening and she's so done. I think all she wants is to just be able to be with Glenn and have their baby. She's sick of being cornered and like being in danger. Then we see them in the shower scene and he's kind of washing her, her rubbing soap on her or something and he sees all the bruises on her. This then alerts him to the fact that there was physical violence involved and nobody really knows if the baby's okay. It's just presumed that it is. But then Daryl leaves Alexandria to go after Dwight and Glenn follows him with Michonne and Rosita. When they get into the woods, Daryl is just too far gone and he doesn't want to hear any smart words. So Glenn decides, all right, fuck it. Glenn leaves with Michonne and Rosita goes with Daryl. Glenn and Michonne end up getting captured and when we last see Glenn, he is pulled out of the van and he's knelt down in front of Negan. That's when he sees Maggie's current condition. He didn't know that Maggie had fallen sick when he left Alexandria. She's pale, she's sweaty, she is really not in good shape. When Negan says to her, I should just kill you right now and put you out of your misery. Glenn loses the plot and starts like screaming at him and then he changes his tone and he starts begging Negan. And that is the last we see of Glenn in the TV show. If you have read the comics, spoilers, Glenn is the one who meets Lucille, which is Negan's bat. If they don't state that storyline like I've stated many times before, it's going to affect the future of certain characters. Maggie goes on to become leader of Hilltop and if Glenn lives in the show, I don't see how that would happen. They could have Glenn die in state of the comic book storyline where Maggie will just go on and become leader or they could have Glenn live. But I, th I just, I think if Glenn lives that Maggie and Glenn will kind of give up. They've been through so much that they'll almost like retire, that they'll just want to be safe. They'll stop going on runs, they'll stop doing reckless stuff. Relationship wise, as I've touched on a bit, his relationship with Dale was impactful on him. His relationship with Herschel was certainly impactful on him. He was like a father figure to him. Obviously the relationship with Maggie is his driving force. As he's leaving Alexandria to go after Daryl, we see him look at her in the rearview mirror. This is kind of like that no matter what he's doing, Maggie is always in the back of his mind. His relationship with Rick as well is really important. Glenn is the first person that Rick comes into contact with from the group. Glenn saved Rick's life, brought him back to the group, which in turn led him back to his family. We've watched Rick and Glenn both develop and mature, but they've stayed friends, they've stayed respectful of each other and whatnot. His relationship with Noah and Nicholas were both very important for him as well. Noah because Noah had lost his family and he'd lost everything that he loved. And Glenn said to Noah, you know, you're part of the family, you're part of us now, we look after you kind of thing. And then he had to watch Noah be killed up against the glass revolving door. I think that was just such a shattering moment for Glenn. Especially then when Noah said, you know, don't let go. It was a very Jack and Rose moment. His relationship with Nicholas, because Nicholas started off as kind of like a prick. He turned out to be a coward. Then they had the fight and Glenn spared his life and kind of tried to like train him or teach him his ways, which in turn led to Nicholas helping Glenn and Heath out. Then just ended up being for fucking nothing because Nicholas led Glenn down a death alleyway and then killed himself. He was like, ha, I'm out, look after yourself. So even though Glenn had tried with Nicholas, 
the coward was still in him. The fear was still in him and there was nothing Glenn could do for Nicholas. So yeah, I think that's it for my Glenn character development. I hope I covered everything there. Glenn went from being a kind of shy, quirky, fast scavengers in season one to a very kind of family orientated man. Even from episode one, he was straight in there with the kind of brave helping people kind of thing, which he continued on throughout all of the seasons. So I think the main thing for Glenn is just kind of struggling with the world and with morals more than anything else. Like I said about the prison when he said that they should have killed all the inmates when they arrived, stuff like that. But I don't necessarily think that he needed to adapt and become brave in the sense of like learning to kill walkers or learning to overcome fears or whatever because he was the one who went down under the building to try and find a way out when they were trapped in Atlanta. He was the one who went down the well. He's nearly died so many times. The well walker I think was one of the first times that he properly nearly died. The dumpster scene, the first dumpster scene where Herschel was laying fire for him and Glenn ducked and f freaked out and froze. We have the time at the prison when he went back into the prison for Maggie and ended up passing out amongst all the walkers but somehow survived. Then we have Terminus who was next in line to be killed but he wasn't. Then we have the actual dumpster scene where Nicholas shoots himself and falls on Glenn. I don't know, I don't know how long they're going to keep that going for. I don't know if they've been teasing his death all along because they're going to keep it the same as in the comics. But Glenn has been a steady, secure character since episode one. So that is all for this video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, you know, let me know what your favourite moments of Glenn were or what your least favourite moments were, because that's something I didn't cover. And let me know who you'd like to see me talk about next. I don't know why you guys like these videos, but you really do seem to, so leave a suggestion with who you'd like to see next. And I'll talk to you all soon.